Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Unite VR. So in this tutorial we're going to look at making an object throwable. So um, the first thing we're going to do is go into our, into our camera. So this is based on my tutorial one where we added the camera, uh, camera rig settings um, and the general basic um, VR environment. And you can see if you've followed my previous tutorials, I've just reused the scene where I could shoot these balloons. But in this version, we're not going to be able to shoot them. We're gonna throw these pool balls at them. So what I've done is in my camera rig, I've expanded it down to the right hand anchor because I'm right handed. Feel free to choose the left hand. And for this one, I've just added a little sphere. So if I zoom right in, there's a sphere and I've just put it to the front. This is just so we can see what's picking things up. So I've got the sphere. Um, I am going to make this a trigger item um, and there's no rigid body to this, but it's just the sphere collider. But what I have done though is I've had added, added a tag called hand. So I just went to add tag, I typed in hand, went back on the sphere and then physically chose it to be a hand so that it knows when you're picking the ball up it's you that's picking it up and it's not just some other collision detection. Okay, so that's our pick up a ball. So I've now got some spheres. I've already got these pool balls made and I've just used the pool texture because it was quick and easily available. So I'm going to click on these spheres um, and I'm just going to make sure that we've got the right settings. So um, I want them to be a trigger object at first. So I've made sure they are triggers. Uh, that means they're, they're not going to be solid just yet. This means you can put your hand in and pick them up. I've turned the gravity off so that when we start the game they don't just fall through. This just makes it a bit easier because if you make it solid and you reach out for it, your the, the, the solidness of your hand will start to push it away. And I don't want that right now. So right now it's it's the triggers on, there's no gravity and it's not kinematic. And that's for all the spheres. Okay, so now what I wanna do is make this item to be pick up a ball and throw a ball. So we're gonna add a new script. So if I just call this um, throw a ball, I mean, it's up to you what you want to call yours, but I'm just going to call mine um, that. So I create an add. So I hope that's now gone on to all of them. You can see it's just compiling for the moment. Just have to be patient while it loads. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure it's all there. Yep, it's on each one. That's fine. So now I'm going to just double click and this should load it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so now into Visual Studio. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create an on trigger event. So void on trigger, and trigger enter. So that's you you and your hand picking it up. Uh, I'm going to be lazy and copy some code that I've previously written. So our first line is trigger right. So again, this is very similar to what we did before, which is when I squeeze the trigger, um, it's gonna assign that value from the quest into trigger right, and then if our trigger is, is 0 0.9, so it's nearly one, you've nearly clicked it all the way, and it's the hand that's picked up, we're gonna be able to say, yep, pick up is true, and we're gonna set, sort of set, our, our pull ball to be the parent of your hand, just like I did in the previous tutorial for picking objects up. What I've not done is I need some global variables. So at the very top, I'm just gonna add these in. So this list tracking position, so this is a list of positions that we're gonna keep track of. So as you're moving your hand round, our software is gonna record each physical position your hand is currently in, so we can keep a track of how fast is it moving. And then this is how, how much effort we want to put into it. So right now it's a default value of a thousand. We could use the distance between tracking positions as part of our velocity, but for now we're just gonna use it for direction, just keep things nice and simple. Um, a few more variables that we're gonna need as well is, has our ball actually been picked up? So, of course, when we start the game, no, it's not. What hand is it connected to? So if you did want to have this on left or right hand, you easily could do that. So this is going to be either parent hand, and then the rigid body wants to be able to access that. So, you know, we're going to, when we, when we overlap it, we're going to squeeze the trigger, we're going to say picked up is true, and we're going to set, sort of set, our object's parent to your hand so it sticks to your hand. Okay, so the next bit we're going to do is in update. And we're just going to do, I'll, I'll do it in chunks, which is... If picked up equals true, then we are, I'm just, I'm just missing a brace there, that's why I'll bring that back. Um, if picked up equals true, so if you have picked it up, then we're gonna make sure gravity's turned off, otherwise it's gonna concentrate on a fall out your hand. And we're gonna set the position and rotation of the ball to whatever your parent hand is doing. Our next stretch is we're just gonna keep track of, well, no pun intended, the actual tracking part of our object. So, of our hand, sorry. So I'm just saying, 
we're going to keep track of the last 15 positions of your hand in physical space. Um, and once once you get a new position, we're going to delete the old one. So it just it's a bit like Snake when you get rid of the last bit of the tail when you're drawing it on screen. And then we're going to add the current position to the screen. So it's just keeping track of the last 15 positions. If, if you don't know if it's accurate enough, we could always extend that. And we might do that in a, in a future tutorial when we do look at using the speed of your hand as part of the of the velocity. Okay, so the next bit again is, what if we want to release it? Obviously we want to let go of our, of our ball so we can throw it in the air. So we are still inside the picture B equals true, and we're just going to check the trigger. So again, we're now, we're now going to get the same trigger, so it's the same variable. I could have made this global. Um, and we're going to just say, if, if our trigger is less than, well, close to zero, if it's close to zero, it means we've let go of the trigger. Um, and I just got these numbers through trial and error, this whole 0.9 and 0.1. That just seems to work for me. Uh, and there's a whole chunk of code coming now in one go, which is, obviously, if we've let go of it, pick up equals false. We're going to let go of the ball. Now we're going to work out the direction based on the most newest position and the oldest position we've got stored. We're now going to add that force, and we're going to add the force origin body using that direction times whatever this speeds up here. So again, we could in a future tutorial make that more of a dynamic variable. We're going to say, yep, we now want to use gravity, otherwise your ball's going to go forever, unless you want to make a space game. And then is kinematic equals false? So just in case it was set to kinematic, which it may have been. And then also we're going to turn the trigger off. So it's no longer a triggerable item. So now once you've let go of it, that's it. That ball is now flying through the air or dropping to the floor if you weren't moving very far at all. Um, and you won't be able to pick it up again. Again, that's some game mechanic we could perhaps change. So now we've got our script written for throwing an object. So I'm just going to save that. We can now come back into Unity. It's going to take a moment to compile. Okay, so the, the next thing I want to do is obviously we've now got our spheres, we've got our we've got our code on. So these objects should be throwable, but as soon as they hit um, this this wall, they just drop to the floor and that's it. I want to make them a little bit bouncy. So I'm just gonna go into my folders, machines, I throw, and I'm just gonna create a new material. So create material, but it's a physics material this time. Um, where have I? I just seem to have lost it temporarily. There we go, physics material. Um, I'm just going to call it bouncy. Uh, I'm just going to come up to this top. I'm going to set these to zero, but this to one. And now if I just open up the spheres, you can see what's material, physics material, none. I'm just going to drag bouncy onto them. And now our balls should be throwable. Um, just to give you a quick final recap, if you've missed this from a previous tutorial, my balloon um, has a simple script that I wrote called C balloon. It's for class balloon. I always spelled that wrong. Um, and in the balloon, uh, the main bit is just like before on the previous one on collision enter. So when the ball hits it, it instantiates some particles and destroys itself immediately. Um, and that's just some up and down code, which is there if you're interested in it. Okay. So now you should be able to, to you should be able to now go into your build settings, add your current scene, make sure you've got the one, and then build and run, and you should have your game playing. Okay, I shall see you in the next tutorial.